Okay, it being uh, 7.30, I suppose uh, we should open the meeting. So um, um, for the record, anybody else listening, this meeting is being recorded. And uh, we could, uh, I suppose we could start with a couple. Well, we have a time specific um, item for um, eight o'clock. Yeah, for the extension of that uh, Crestwood Estates there. So um, the question is where, where should we uh, begin? Let me look at this here. Um, Okay. Um, I, I estimate that the Shea Lane uh, discussion may last longer than the half hour we have between now, as much as I would like to let people who come here not have to wait that long. Uh, mm -hmm. what do you, what's your feeling, Danielle? Do you think we should? Uh... I mean, it's possible that it might. I, I hate to keep everyone waiting. I, I, yeah, I, me too. I wouldn't object to starting with that and then. Okay. We can continue the hearing at eight and then go back to it. Okay. All right. That's what right, I would then. do. Okay. Then let's, let's, let's do that. So um, in the beginning uh, here, we would, uh, I don't know, do we want a little preamble to open this up? Uh, Danielle, do you want to just have a, this quick discussion about what, what's transpired the last two weeks or something? Sure. Uh, so, so at the last meeting, we talked about um, some remediation, um, uh, some possible solutions such as, um, you know, check dams and what have you to, to, to try to address, you know, the fact that we have this runoff going from uh, Nine Shailene onto the abutters on Nutter Road. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, you and um, our consulting engineer, uh, Mr. Gian Grande, and I and um, David Murray have met on um, Uh, or two of whom have sent us, you know, photos and videos of, of the problem um, from, you know, the very rainy weekend that we had. Um, so, you know, you and Warren, you and I and Dave Gian Grande had met to talk about, you know, Dave writing up a report with recommendations for how we ought to, ad to address this. Dave has given us a report um, with recommendations. Um, that report is in your uh, file. Uh, the, it's in the share file. I don't know if um, if you you would like to have uh, you know Dave talk through uh, his recommendations for how this should be addressed. Sure, um, and he may be Dave. You may be able to just uh, um, you know just briefly. Uh, uh, recap part of what's in your report and go just and then go pretty much right to the recommendations at the bottom. Um, and then I'm going to then what I would like to do at that point is, is definitely is uh, after hearing the recommendations that we have uh, mm -hmm. listen to site uh, has a, a hill in the middle and for the most part it drain the drains that piece of the watershed northeast towards what is now lot nine and um so as not lot nine was being constructed uh the this temporary plunge pool had to be relocated to facilitate the home and the septic system and other things so 
a lot of grading occurred on lot nine um, as, as part of that. Um, so with that, this, this uh, late, uh, late summer, through the summer and, and into the fall, we had a couple of occurrences, as Danielle mentioned, that we now had, uh, again, uh, had been a couple of years, but now we had accidental encroachment of that um, uh, uh, runoff and silt onto those ab abutting property. Uh, at one time, uh, it was three different abutters. It, it appears that the uh, Quinlans are no longer getting runoff. I haven't heard anything from them, but uh, several years ago, they were also being affected. So um, now, now um, we have been taking a look at what the development of lot nine means to, uh, to this, as well as what's happening uh, in terms of the entire watershed, which is the subdivision. Um, so more recently, um, the, some changes were made. Um, the Board of Health uh, reviewed the septic design, reviewed uh, uh, some uh, the, um, the slopes and some grading. Um, we have been um, trying to work with the, uh, the abutter, uh, uh, the, both abutters as well as the homeowners at lot nine and uh, their design engineer, as well as the subdivision developer, Dave Murray. Um, and so we're getting to the point where now everything is, is starting to uh, come to conclusion and uh, we, we still have a, a problem that uh, is, is persisting. So um, like I had mentioned before, this is a process and now uh, we've got to make sure that we address this uh, uh, prior to the end of the project. So, um, so I went out, I, I met out in the field, uh, been out a couple of times, pretty much for every major storm over the, the summer and fall, I was out there and I think the abutters have seen me out there a number of times trying to understand the situation and the contributory factors. Um, so as part of my recommendation, um, I, I feel strongly that we need to understand the slopes and, and the grading on lot nine. Um, we need to have a, a, a better understanding of when the, uh, the pond is discharging we have been out there on several occasions where the pond is not discharging, but, um, uh, but yet we still have localized uh, um, puddling and, and flooding. So we looked at, uh, number one, we looked at the pond. The pond was outlet, uh, was called for a level spreader. That level spreader would take what we call a point source discharge from a pipe and then re-spread it uh, over a, a 20, 30, 40 foot area. So it would more closely emulate natural drainage running off uh, into a wooded section. Uh, we've asked Mr. Murray to make those changes. Uh, that was part of our recommendation. We also need to know what's happening in and around this area. So my recommendation was to, um, uh, to provide a uh, as built plan so we can understand the slopes and understand how it was graded relative to the original subdivision plan and relative to the approved septic design plan. Um, some other things that we noticed, uh, there, was, uh, there was some infiltrators put on in in lot nine, um, yet not a large percentage of the roof drains were actually tied in to, uh, to that area. So we feel that um, some of this uh, superficial runoff can be directed towards these infiltrators if the, uh, if the, if the gutters and downspouts are, are brought to those infiltrators. And um, so that was uh, another, um, uh, another um, recommendation. So all in all, uh, one would be the uh, level spreader. Another one would be um, the, the, the as-built plan. Uh, another recommendation was to have uh, the, we asked for some computations to be done. Uh, uh, they did do computations for the sizing of these infiltrators for the roof drains, 
However, they uh, did not do uh, reanalyze the uh, the entire watershed that contributes to this area. So we're asking that we have a registered professional engineer in the Commonwealth provide drainage comps and evaluate that as well. And um, the last piece was uh, the the that the downspouts be and, and gutters be added and connected into the uh, into the uh, um, infiltration system, uh, along with the, uh, the the level spread of being constructed as shown on the subdivision plan. So with all of these uh, elements, uh, um, uh, we're hopeful that uh, we, you know, we will see a, a drastic improvement. And then again, uh, everybody needs to keep in mind that the, the runoff characteristics on the property um, uh, uh, are still different than they will be in a couple of years when uh, everything is the grass is growing and the trees are, are working and the uh, the curbing is in and uh, we've we've got a even a, a, a greater opportunity to direct the water. So, in a nutshell, that those uh, those four recommendations again to to recap: the drainage computations, the as-built plan, the level spreader, tying in roof drains, and and um, and and managing the on-site uh, runoff. So. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, so um, I'd like to give, I know that the last time we, uh, there were a number of people that wanted to make comments, didn't have a chance uh, to do that. So anybody that would uh, um, open this up to the public to, uh, to, to uh, actually have some comments since uh, you didn't get a chance last time. So if you could let me know that you would like to comment, I will um, please let me know. Yes, sir, <coughs> you, you want to comment? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hi, Peter Tassi from Nutter Road. Yes. Um, I just had a couple of questions um, sure. based on what David just reported. I hadn't seen that. So um, first one is the drainage around lot nine that's currently there. Could you address that? Is there anything going to be a change with that? Because ultimately it all goes to that same problem area. Okay, what my um, what what we're recommending and what David said, you know, we, I guess he didn't he didn't really get into it, but but he his uh, he, he, there were two things. One, he says he's want an as built, and the as built, uh, he thinks that we should ask for an as built because an as built will show the current conditions as they exist, and then we'd compare those to the design to the original design, and any flaws in that would have to be fixed. I mean, that's basically the answer, and I I. Uh, and uh, in my estimation, you know, just from looking at it, there's a bit that needs to be done there to bring that 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 site into compliance with uh, the original uh, septic was it with the original subdivision design. And more than a little, it needs to be done. I I, uh, I looked at those swales and those, and and I went I I went out there with them to go over this whole thing, and it and it occurs to me that uh, I don't see any engineering associated with any of that work. So, so the work that was done, uh, somebody needs to, some engineer needs to put a name on it and say that it's okay, but clearly it's not. So that means some changes are probably gonna have to be made in that. And that's what Dave alluded to when he said, before you can make, you need a basis to make your changes from. So the as bill plan becomes the basis. Okay, this is what's happening now, but this is what's supposed to happen. And then we can make comparisons and say, okay, you need to do this to fix the problems. So, okay. you know, in engineer speak, that's what he said in a roundabout way. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page because I, I agree 100%. Um, yeah. Just point of interest, um, the plunge pool that David mentioned about in his report there, yeah, that did work for, you know, a few days. It wasn't a long occurrence. My pool, just right. for the record, has been filled with silt four or five times. Yeah. Just that in itself. So, you know, over the course of five, six years, it's happened numerous times besides the flooding. So it's obviously an ongoing issue, but well, we Mr. Dancy, there, was, there, was, dead there, was a, there was a comment made to me that that somebody looked at that over the weekend when it rained and there wasn't any water. And yet you guys sent me pictures of the water flowing over the weekend. So I thought that was great. That gave me the, all the answers I needed to continue to push on. OK. I'm glad yeah. you did. Those I pictures, just wanted to say. Pictures are a thousand words. Yeah. 
just wanted to say I appreciate you going out there because that was going to be a suggestion last week or two weeks yeah. ago, but whatever. Yeah. Appreciate no, I, when I, so, I somebody actually approached me at a store and asked me about that, and so I came back to the woods <laughs> and now I want to know everything, <laughs> and so that, that's oh, why we're here now. <laughs> right. Uh, with Zoom and everything, it makes it a little more difficult, and getting that bird's eye view, I think, is a, a huge yeah. help to us anyway. Yes. Well, uh, we're uh, we're on it now, so yeah. let's, let's no, see that, what we can do. That's a good thing. We appreciate it. And okay. I just had another question. It's for yes, sir. basically down the road, but I wanted to ask it tonight while I had you here. Um, the issues on my property where the mud and silt has washed through and washed out my lawn, and I've got mud on my side of the stone wall and sil old silt fence and all that. Who would be responsible to, you know, clean that and re-bloom and grade it and seed it and all that? Well, it would not be a planning board matter. It would be a civil issue, in my estimation, from, from experience, but this okay. is what I'm told. So yeah, that would be a civil issue that you would discuss with the with the with the, whoever owned the property that contributed to that. And that probably would be the developer at this point. Okay, uh, just curious, because I really didn't yep. no, know. That's, how it would, that's generally how it would work. Okay, well, thank you so much, I appreciate okay. it. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, so anybody else would like to comment? I know that Ms. Lolly didn't have a chance to comment last time. Um, and I just wanna make sure, I see you've unmuted. Yep. I just, all we're interested in is making sure this problem gets addressed, not just keep putting band-aids on it so that every single time it rains, I'm continually told, well, that was, you know, unprecedented rain. I need everybody to understand that when it rains now, that's what it does. It's unprecedented mm -hmm. rain. And I have continually, and my husband and my neighbor have continually cleaned our properties and been told, you know, when I listened to the last meeting, I heard comments such as, you know, well, what I've done has made it better. It's better. It's not better. I never had water flowing across my property in the 22 years I've been here. And now it seems every single time it rains. Right. And I'm listening to the runoff will be different in a couple of years. What does that mean? Does that mean that I, for the next couple of years, will continue to have streams, debris, and puddles all over my property? I, I, I don't know. No, that's, that's not our, our intention here. Obviously, obviously, we've jumped on this now, and we're starting to push it pretty hard to find out what went wrong here. And um, in, in, again, in my estimation, the work that was done there does not match the originally approved subdivision design and there needs to be some kind of a of a of a uh, correction here, whatever that correction is, because the original subdivision design was approved and was deemed to be sufficient. So, but we're so far away from that right now, we need to get back to it. And I think, and again, the the, the only way to really uh, the, the the way to do that, of course, is as Dave suggested, and that is to come up with a, uh, do an as-built plan so we can see what it is, do the calculations and for, the, for, that, for that catchment area and, and then correct what's wrong with the, with the existing situation. And I think that's, a, I think a good start would be to get it back to the original subdivision approval situation. So, um, okay. So, I mean, because that was at. really my other question at the last meeting was the first thing you did was put that plan up and basically say, this was what was supposed to be built yeah. That didn't get built. And nowhere on that plan did I see that swall that is now on that no. property. Well, you know, I, so I, um, I, I appreciate the fact that it's going to be addressed. Yeah, well, when I, I didn't realize exactly how far, how far away until I started going out there myself. And I've, since then, I've spent some parts of my days every day working on this to find out what went wrong and trying to correct it. So um, once I realized what a problem it was, we've, all, we've been working on it. Okay, so, I appreciate it. Yep. Well, we're gonna and and uh, I want to and I appreciate getting the pictures because it was it was encouraged me that there was no no runoff on this last storm on Saturday and yet I got pictures so that I can say oh no yes there was so so no it doesn't work period so so I thank you for that don't stop. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any comments on this? Yeah, just one real quick. Yep. 
Hi, my name is John Doyle. Uh, you mentioned that somebody had mentioned the Quinlins earlier. We uh, yeah. we bought the property from the Quinlins last year at 20 yeah. Nutter Road, and uh, it's still an issue on this property also. Yeah, I don't I don't doubt it, sir. I, I mean, from uh, because I've been out there and I was out there in the rain for a while with Dave. You know, we we uh, we we actually stood out in the rain for out there for an hour and a half or something, watching everything that happened out there while it was raining. So. So I, I'm acutely aware of, of the fact that it doesn't operate properly. And um, that's why we're here now talking about it. And that's why we had, we had Dave write up a report and, and we're going we're gonna to work our way forward with this. I appreciate it. I just wanted to make, you know, make sure that they, you guys realize that the problem still is at this property also. Well, that, that's good. That, that, will, that will be also, who, at some point, there needs to be a, an engineer involved <laughs> to take care of this. And all this information is going to be transferred to them so that they know to look closely at those different things. So, okay. so thank okay. you. Anybody else have any comments right off hand here? Okay, um, nobody, somebody got your hand up? Do you have your hand up? No, I guess not. Um, so I don't see anybody else. So, so basically, um, I think what our plan is going to is here is to do is to begin is to require some of these things to be done. There needs to be an engineer of record. Um, we told um, the developer that we were going to be having this uh, meeting tonight. We would hope that he would uh, participate and uh, tell I'm us. Here. We, we apparently the original engineer. Are you there? I'm here. Are you here? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, there you are. Are you, uh, did you make, uh, did you manage to come up with an engineer for this project? I uh, talked to Luke Roy today and he told me he was going to submit an as built for a lot six and show that the grading had been substantially completed according to the subdivision plan. I have not yet seen that yet. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, well, the, um... Clearly, the, yes, yeah, I can hear you. But clearly, I, in, in the the grading at the base of uh, of of um, of lot nine does not, uh, or of nine, I guess that's nine J, sure. doesn't really match the subdivision. <laughs> so there's, well, there's clearly to something. The, the, the ninety six elevation is exact yeah. uh, to what he shot. They're both the same. They, they did bring the swale up a little bit, but there was no existing grade on the topo down in the last contour at the corner of the stone wall. Yeah. But uh, about five feet before that was a 96 elevation. And he said that they completed the swale to the same exact elevation as a subdivision plan. I have not seen the as built. I just, that's what I'm told. I asked yeah. him to submit it to me today. He told me he was going to bring it to the planning board before this meeting, I have not seen it yet. Yeah, I don't believe we have it. So, so, um, but we still have the problem of water running off. In, and even on Saturday, as these people took pictures and submitted to us, pictures of Saturday, the water pouring off out of the lot across their property. Well, I went, I went there uh, early today and he still doesn't have the gutters tied into the um, infiltration system. They're yeah. supposed to be tied in. So that's part of the problem. Um, another part well, of the he's problem. only collecting about a fourth of the house. I mean, what was how much of the house was supposed to be collected to put into the infiltration units? All of it? Well, well uh, at least 50% of it, yeah. the half back of the house should have been brought into uh, infiltrators. That's what was supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, he hasn't done that yet. Nope. So he looks like probably, he's he assured me that was going to be done. Um, it wasn't done this as I as today, so um, yeah. I'm going to make sure it gets done. Okay. Um, I'm holding them up on a, a closing, which I don't yeah. want to do, but I need to get these things addressed so it doesn't go to the new owner. Yeah. So um, uh, I don't. The amount of water that I saw in the pictures coming off exceeds what I would anticipate coming off the roof of that house. So there's obviously more water getting down there than should. And again, that, that whole rear section, as we, as we spoke about, you and I spoke about this, that, that it doesn't match, but that swale needs to go away and that grade needs to come across so that that level spreader can actually 
send any water that comes that way. I mean, I know that and it, it appears that the detention pond is working perfectly. It's exactly what it's <laughs> supposed to be and it's not even contributing to this. I mean, it has the ability to contribute in a hundred year storm or something, but we're not having that and it's not contributing water and you're still getting water across into the neighbor's right. yard. So it's coming from somewhere. I, I agree with you, Warren. I think what's happening is I think it's collecting the water on the right side of the house and on the rear side, I think that grade should be brought in. I think it's actually uh, catching water. Yeah. Uh, the stone's catching the water and it's right. pointing it that way. It needs to be Instead filled of letting in. it go across. Exactly correct, yeah. and that's yeah. what I think we have to address. That I got to talk to the um, the builder there and tell him yeah. that needs to be done. I need right. to disconnect it from my. He, that wasn't supposed to be brought up and tied into the subdivision uh, into the right. subdivision retention pond either. So I right. want to connect. I want to disconnect that the um, stone that goes in from the detention pond area to that. Right. That lot grading that he did is for the lot only. It has nothing to do with the pond. He should have never tied it into that pond. That's right. So I'm going to address that. I'm going to go myself. I have to myself. I'm going to go right. take that stone out of there and, yep. and, and fill it in and put the grade across like it was designed to be. It yep. was working great until he went in there and put that stone swill. Right. Well, I'm not surprised because it looks to me like the original subdivision plan, um, which had that filled in, did not have that swill. Actually, if from, from the modeling that was done, it works. So right. but the modeling is out the window now because of what's been done. Right, so we need right. to go back to square one. We need one to go back. Area. Exactly yes. right. Yes. I just wanted to see the Asbel plan to see how close yep. it was. Yep. Uh, he told me he was coming today with a letter saying that it conforms to the southern. I'm not. I'm not concerned about what the elevation down at that corner is. I mean, because it is a 96 elevation. Although the, there's a lot less 96 elevation on his on his design than there was in the original. There's there's a lot more yes. quote unquote 96 elevation on the original design than there is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is according to his septic design. So I think that, the, that it is shorted a little, but I don't think that's even the bigger issue. The bigger issue is too much water is getting to that point and where it's coming from and where it should be going is the question. I think, like I said, I think it's that stone along the back. Yep. It's almost like, um, how can I put this? If that was loam, yeah. I think it would dissipate into the ground. And I think what's happened is the stone is collecting the water. And then speeding it up. It's speeding it up. <laughs> I yeah. think he did the opposite. Well, right, right now, it. your uh, right now your rate of runoff exceeds pre-development. Right, because he put a stone swill. It's like putting right. a driveway down there. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like putting right. something pervious in the way right. and saying, "Okay, here you are, water. Let's go to the end." So I really do think that I really do think there needs to be some calculations done and, to, and some some computations done to show that. Whatever, because I don't want to fix it once and then fix it again and then fix it again. I, I hear you. Okay, <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is get 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 this this properly. I mean, an as an as built from him would be good, but I think there needs to be an as built of a larger section because you still have the issue of the breakout on the house across the street that's mm -hmm. going to be tied into that storm drain there. Although again, it appears that the detention pond can handle that without right. a problem right. because the detention pond is pond from what I can see of it. And look at the staining in it has not contributed a single drop to this runoff. Correct. So that means that it's it's fine. The, the problem is coming from improper grading on the site. Correct. So I agree. Okay. All right. Is there any other com um, anybody else comments? Does anybody have a question or a comment they'd like to make? Dave, is, we do, we, Dave and I have obviously spoken, and and, and um, he does, I'm glad he agrees that he's willing to and he's willing to fix as much of this as we can but we need to first get a handle on what's there and where we need to go with it. So that was Dave's, uh, Jane Randy's recommendation and I, and, and I concur with that. Um, I think that's where we need to go with it. So let's, we're gonna continue to go forward with this. Stay in touch with everybody. Uh, if, unless, if there are no other questions and everything, we're gonna move on here. Mr. Tassi has his hand up. Oh, I, okay. Yes. I just had one more question, sir. Sure. Um, is, is there any one? <laughs> Is there any way possible that we, you know, along the way, along this process from this point forward that we could get notified at some point, you know, like updated as to where we stand with everything that's going to be going on? Because I'm certainly not an engineer and I don't sure. understand a lot of it, but I do understand sure. some of it. So sure. I, I didn't know if that was possible somehow. What I would like to do, uh, Mr. Tessie, is I would like to get, get everybody moved along in some direction so that we have an idea what we're going to do. Then I want them to bring it back to the board. I would like to notify you guys, especially you guys, you, you abutters, 
that, and so that you can come and listen to the final decisions that are being made <coughs> as we move forward. That'd that would be true. That would be I great. Think, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's, it's a little bit of it is self-serving too here because I want, I want to know if it's working. I want to hear from you to say, yeah, whatever they did worked. That's what I want to hear. So yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so please do show. Thank you okay. so much. Yep. Okay. Anybody else have any uh, questions or comments? Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Mr. Jim Grandy. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did I hear somebody else? No, I think it's just background noise. Okay. Um, Mr. Gene Grandy, thank you very much for your time and coming tonight. Um, Mr. Murray, thank you so very much. I'm glad you're willing to work with this. You, you know, if we all work together, we'll get this all squared away. There'll be no more issues. Okay. So do a do a press up on your engineer and, and, and is if Luke will be willing to be the site engineer as well. I know he's capable of it if you uh want to have him um, take on some of this responsibility, it would help quite a bit too. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dave, for coming. All right. Thank you all. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, Warren, you did well. Thank you. It's, well, uh, I, I've got it's, more it's, than a little bit of time invested in this already. Oh, I know you have. <laughs> what I mean time-wise tonight, it's only 8.02, so yeah. you're, right on, you're right on the button. Well, I mean, it was, uh, you know, I wanted to give everybody the chance, especially the people that are going to be our eyes and ears out there as oh, yeah. it goes on. I want to hear from them. You it, know, I as mean, time yeah, goes on. The, the pictures and the videos are, are great because, yeah, you know, yeah. we, we can't be there when we're, I mean, we can sometimes, but not always well, are we available yeah. to go when it's raining like that. Yep. Well, once I learned that there was an issue here, we, we jumped right into it with both feet yeah. on it. And the board has been yeah. on, is, we're, we're working on it. We haven't let, uh, yeah. we haven't backed off here, so. You so are. We'll, uh, we'll get it fixed. Okay. Uh, do uh, Chris, do you want to do a motion for the extension, the, uh, the continuation? Sure. Uh, I can do that. Yes, to you. Do you need to open that? Do you need to open that hearing first? I mean, it's already um, open. It's a continued yeah, hearing. I'll, I'll, uh, okay. I'll just uh, no. I we, you know since it's a continuation, I will open the public hearing. A continuation of the public hearing. For, uh, Mr. Pierce. Street and Nine Flint Street. Yes, sir. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the requested continuance of the public hearing for 39 Chestnut and 9 Flint Street until Tuesday, December 21st, 2021 at 8 p.m. Second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, I got a roll call. Roll call. Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Redlaw. And uh, you, you are, I think you're muted, Dave. Aye. Okay, and myself, I as well. And uh, Ryan's not with us this evening. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. Um, minutes, well, Chris, while you got the uh, minutes, and while you got the motions in front of you. I didn't see any. For There I'm are no minutes. Tonight. Oh, they're not, they're not here? here. No. Okay. Okay. You can so, do your A and R. Uh, yeah, we can do the A and R. Um, so, do we have somebody uh, to present the A and R tonight, or? Uh, yes, we do. Mr. Attorney Caruso. Caruso. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Peter Caruso. I'm an attorney, and tonight I represent the uh, Heffron Asphalt Group. Yep. Uh, they have an application before you for a, a plan to believe to be a, an a and plan, approval not required. I think you have copies of uh, the plan uh, there. Yep. Uh, if, you, if you take a look at it, it's, uh, it's going to, the, some of the, um, the approval not required will create two lots. Both lots will be not, will, will be conforming. Uh, they both have frontage in a public way. Uh, lot two will have a driveway onto uh, Winter Street. As shown, I've also uh, I've also submitted to the board a, a copy of the driveway plan to show how the driveway is going to be implemented on lot two, and and it has um it, it has a proper frontage on lot two, and it also has and we can talk about the uh, driveway plan in a minute. But lot one, the, the remaining lot, has a frontage of three hundred and sixty three feet. Lot two, a frontage of one hundred and seventy two point six nine feet. Uh, lot one has an area of fifty five thousand three hundred and fifteen feet. 
and lot two has an area of 42,371 feet. Uh, both lots will conform to the zoning district highway business. Uh, in the, the, on lot two, there will be a driveway and the plan that you have in front of you will show a driveway um, slope of uh, 3.1. Uh, we, 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 that, that should be sufficient. And I'll take any questions that the board may have. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any questions or comments from the board? No, the drawing is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah, right, Chris. Yep. Simple no, go ahead, understand. David. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I, I, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I was just going to ask, and it's, uh, it's my my own uh, inexperience, but do do we require anything more than the A and R for the curb cut onto Winter Street onto Route 62 that's shown? That's handled in the A and R. Um, go ahead, Danielle. Um, a curb cut permit would be needed from the DPW, but that curb cut by itself wouldn't um, trigger a site plan review. I think, I mean, I appreciate that the curb that the curb cut and driveway is shown because otherwise there could be some question about the grade. Is this real frontage? Um, and it yeah. does show, it, it, it's a demonstration that it can be accessed. At least that yep. was my interpretation of why it was there. That's the right. why they put it there. So Mr. Caruso that's it. Said, yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, there wouldn't be another review it would but the dpw would issue a you know a permit for the curb cut they would they would okay. review it for a sight line things like that or would since it onto a highway it's not onto just a residential road right i don't know what's involved in issuance of of the curb cut permit from dpw i'm not actually sure what they what they look like look look what they look at uh, whether it's sight lines or grades um, i don't know so I would, yeah, I would think that if we had, a, if we were going to do a development of some kind there, um, which may, I don't know, maybe, maybe it will happen that they'll do some kind of development, which would result in a site plan review and a review of the curb cut. But um, um, we could check with the DPW on that to see if they would want anything further than, um, because, you know, because obviously the sight line there is good. It's a straight line on both sides. So right. it's not a, uh, it's not a situation where there's a, uh, where there's a questionable sight line. If, uh, if I may, Mr. Pierce. Yeah. Um, David, the uh, A&R, one of the big things is, is having illusory frontage and access. Right. Right. And, and having a big hill where you can't actually put a driveway in. Like, you know, having 20 feet from the roadway to the, to the ground. You can't really put a driveway in there. But there is a uh, there is an elevation difference here. But this this driveway is kind of demonstrates that it can be done. They may right. not ever put the driveway there. They may put it there, but they don't yeah. have to put it there. Yeah, it's it's it's, right. it's basically a demonstration that they can actually build a driveway, which is good for us. We don't have to ask the question: Is this right. is this a real frontage or is this fake? Yeah, yeah, that needed to be that needed to be there to make this A and R simple. They have that yeah. driveway already there. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's, that's why I didn't have many questions. That's right. Yeah, yeah and that is a point that they could, that, that just proving that they can, proving they can do access without a problem eliminates that as a question, but, it, but, but you are correct in that um, they could move it around if they need to for some reason or another and when they get their permit from the DPW. The other question I had, Mr. Chairman, is just obviously if you're doing an A&R and you're splitting a single lot into two lots, there could be things in the works. It's not really any of my business, but one thing I would like to understand because the uses that are currently grandfathered there are not allowed in, you know, in the highway business district without a special permit, without a site plan review. So I just want to understand from the attorney, if there is going to be some use that is planned in here that does not match what was there before because if it does it will come back through us and or have to come back through us because it's it's not no longer the conforming yeah well, I think that's, a, that's yeah that's the comment that i made dave that if anything if they decide to do something different here they will end up in front of us regardless uh, that's uh, a good question i actually address that uh the the buyer is actually a tenant in the existing building uh all he's going to do is own the building that he's now leasing. So there were no plans to, uh, to change that existing steel building uh, for the use that, that is currently used. Nothing's going to change for the use. He's just going to own the building that is now rented. 
Right. But I mean, again, without being a stickler, but that's as an engineer, that's kind of my back is the use, or at least one of them there is a landscape where the landscaping has never been a use there. Like that wasn't a grandfathered heifer use. It was materials. It was an asphalt company, you know, so it's landscaping now. And so what's, what's maybe the next one? And I just want to kind of get on record. What are the grandfathered uses there? It'd be important, I think, for the planning board to establish what that is so that if Mr. Heffern does sell the properties um, altogether, these, these new buyers, our owners, have, are aware that there's limitations to this grandfathered use. And it's no problem. I mean, like Warren said, they'll just come back through us, but I just want them full disclosure to understand that. I will, the attorney on the other side is, is very, very experienced. Uh, and I will explain that to Attorney Peterson. Uh, but at this point, they just want to uh, you know, split the lots up and then go go forward. But I understand where, where you're coming from. And if there is a change in the use, I'm sure that Attorney Peterson will come before the board. Yeah, no problem. I have no problem, man. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, if I could prevail upon you, Mr. Hayden, again. Mr. Pierce. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to endorse as approval not required, the plan entitled Plan of Land, 66 Winter Street, North Reading, Mass, dated September 29th, 2021, drawn by Andover Consultants Incorporated. Second that. Okay, I have a motion to second. Um, any further questions or discussion? Okay, a roll call vote. Mr. Hayden, how say you? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Redlaw? Aye. And myself, aye. So that let the record show four in favor, no opposed, and Ryan is not with us this evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Caruso, for, uh, for bringing everything to us tonight. Do you have a question there, Danielle? Are you good? No, nope, all set. Okay, there you go. Thank Great. you, sir. Thanks, thank Peter. You. Thank you. We'll be in touch about getting the endorsed, uh, sorry, with the CPC members about getting the plans endorsed and then with you, Mr. Caruso, about picking them up. <laughs> I'll gladly pick them up. Danielle, thank you very much for your cooperation. We really appreciate yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All set? Yep, all set. Good, good night, thank you. Good, good, night. good night. Good night. Okay. Um, well, we have a couple of items here. Small wireless facilities policy. I know we kind of went over that. Is there any changes in that or are we just bringing it back to the forefront for a little while? Just been bringing it back to the forefront. Um, I didn't make any changes from the last time we saw it. Um, the only thing that has, bless you, the only thing that has changed is that the Attorney General's office has approved um, the zoning amendment that passed at town meeting in June. So at this point, we would be free to um, go ahead and uh, vote on a policy. I thought that I wasn't necessarily, you know, I wasn't planning on have, doing that at this meeting because I think we would advertise it first, but I just wanted to bring it back to you, share with you that what the draft was, you know, dredge it up from six months ago and remind you that we do have it out there um, and to see if you would like me to go ahead with scheduling. Um, just, we would just have it as a as a public hearing at a regular meeting and it would be- Sure, out. so there was some question about the burying of the cabinets. Yes. And um, what what's the you know is there is there an opposite is there um, people that don't think we should do that or is there town council's response to that was you can put it in the bylaw that you want the cabinets underground but you can't require it in an instance where they can't do it. So oh, if yeah. they wanted to do an installation, you can't use that as a, a reason to. Yeah, deny if the water it. table is like a, is six inches down with a thing will be underwater all the time, you, they're not going to do that. Right, They're so we have to, to let it, them, we need to it. allow for the other kind of design also, yeah. um, if they can do that. But I could adjust the bylaw so that, or the, adjust the policy so that it it, it, clear, it says that more clearly. Yeah, Mr. Ahead, Pierce. Yep. So Danielle, um, can we require that if they cannot bury the cabinets, they give us reason and engineering proof they can't? You follow what I'm saying? They, they can't just come up and should, say no, just because they want to. I think we should put something in that does require it. Um, okay. I can also run that by town council, but I think that's reasonable. I think we should. 
Yeah, not that, you know, all, all I want to see is the engineering proof they can't do it. Yeah. Because yeah. we know that that's how they do it in other parts of the country. They bury these things. Yeah, it's I a little different here. Them. Right, you do, Warren. And, mm-hmm. But where's their water table? It's not oh, yeah, way down. Yeah. It's not like our water table. So and that's if they can show us that the water table is, like you said, a foot down or six inches down, it's, it's not really feasible for them to bury it. Now we have to well, do something. Well, there, are places, there, there are places in this country where where um, the flat where there are a lot of flat land, you know, out in, in the, you know, Kansas, Indiana, Missouri, yeah. and where the land's pretty flat. And so when it rains hard, the, the, every place gets wet. I mean, it's not right. It's, uh, well, you see it on the news, the flooding that happens in yep. a lot of these, these states where the land is very flat with in New England, we don't. We have so many hills and everything. Everything goes to the low spot. So yeah, uh, and then it floods. We're not, as, we're not as universally affected by a flooding rain as an area that's right. that's flat, where everybody will get affected by it. So, that's right. So, so that means that that. So what that means is that that these cabinet situations and things have been done have probably been worked out so where they can be put in areas that may have occasional impact. That I think that was my point. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Do you want me to set a, a, a date for us to have? We could even put it on as you know workshop discussion and you know vote um, yeah. on a policy, and we can advertise it. Um, I don't well, know if I you would, want me to do that yet. What I what I would probably like is you know one thing. I, what I would like. Uh, I'm not addressing your question right there. I'm, I'm going back to the Barry. I'd like you to, to see if if any other towns or any other. Uh, municipalities have, in, have insisted on underground, uh, you know, because I know in our planning magazines, there are a lot of advertisements you know, for underground cabineting for different kinds of things. So, um, you know, you, just every one of them's got to add two or three ads of something and I'm showing specialized cabinets to go underground, you know, to, for, for, to hold utilities. So, uh, so I know that there, there's, there's been some research and some, certainly some innovation available for that kind of a thing. But yeah, probably um, um, if we're gonna set a policy, we, we probably would want to, I don't know if we want to have a meeting and then brainstorm all our policies, you know, put everything, you know, everybody think of as much as they can and and let's look at, again, at other bylaws and, and, and put together a policy that we think addresses the- um, Well, we do have it drafted. Yeah, okay. Um, which we can discuss, we can change. Um, it's been a long time since we talked about it, but we do have a draft policy, yeah. so. Um, okay, so let's put it on another meeting and we'll, and we'll, you know, where we don't have too much else and we'll, we'll review it. In the meantime, everybody can, um, if you have, if you, since you sent it out, we can all just read, because it's quite a few pages to read. So, so we can read the whole thing through again and, and come up with any comments or questions. Okay, so I'll put it on the agenda for a less busy meeting for a review. And then yep. following that meeting, when we're satisfied, we'll schedule a date for the actual public hearing and to pass it. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. <laughs> All of Everybody's us. favorite <laughs> thing. I'm just yeah. along for the ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know... Um, I know we, you had a meeting with a building inspector, right, on this, and I don't think I was available for that meeting, so um, go ahead. Um, so I had, I brought it to the last development team meeting, as uh, suggested the last time we spoke about this, and each um, person who attended the meeting had, had some feedback, um, some comments. I had some sort of specific questions on a few issues that I would like them to focus on, um, but I did. I think I got some decent feedback. I, I wrote it up and I included it in the share file. Um, uh, the assessor wasn't able to attend, but she sent me her feedback separately, which um, you know I thought she had made some good points, raised some questions and concerns. Um, I just kind of, I mean, I can go over the various comments that they made, but I think in general, um, there was generally um, not a lot of support for detached, which on this board also not a lot of support for detached um, accessory dwellings, but within a house, um, there, there really wasn't anyone at the development team meeting who had any objection to us having a process to allow those, but 
Police and fire, their bottom line is they just wanna know where these are so that they know where people live so that in an emergency, they can find them. That's really their main concern. Um, there were some there were some other pieces of feedback, but that was really their, their biggest um, issue. And so having a good way to track these, everyone really seemed to agree that a special permit process would be preferable so that each one of these really could be reviewed individually. Um, size was talked about. The assessor thought that it, it should be of a larger size and the, the, the others didn't quite agree and thought that they should really be limited to, to a bit smaller, um, more in the you know, maximum 900 square foot range. Um, and Why, what did the assessor are, think they should be? She had said, let me just pull up her notes. Hers are um, pretty high. Bigger. <laughs> bigger than my house. Let me see. Yeah, I was wow. going to say it's about a 65% <laughs> add to my house, what she thinks is okay. That'd be a, that's I, a lot. I think she was concerned that if we made the size limit too small, that it wouldn't be of help to anyone. Um, but let me see exactly what her range was. I'm just going to pull that up in the, in the notes. Mm. Um, okay. It's in my memo. Um, I can read it if you want. It's at the very end. Um, yeah. Let me see. I don't think I ever thought of it from that point of view, that it would, if it was too small, that wouldn't be you know helpful attractive. yeah so she she notes that there's one for on stone cleave that has 1374 square feet that is in fact bigger than my house um and another one at 66 chestnut um 66 chestnut that's interesting over 1500 square feet um everyone that's else a huge everyone else yeah, the the house, thought that that the was house big is up over 5000 altogether i think those are some people suggested making it a percentage of the primary house, um, limiting it to, you know, X percent or X number of square feet, whichever is larger to make it proportional. I don't know how important the proportion is. I think it's more, we probably just don't want them too huge. But. Yeah. Well, you, you could, you know, you can use up 900 square feet pretty quick. How big is your kitchen, Danielle? Is it 10? Is your kitchen's like 12 by 12, 12 by 15. Well, it's combined with my dining room, so it's bigger than that. Um, but I don't have a dining room, so I don't have. Actually... You have an eating kitchen, is what you have. I have it. I have an eating kitchen. Yes, yes, I do. So I mean, if, it, if 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 it's yeah. twenty by fifteen, you're talking, you know, that's three hundred square feet right there. That's a third of yeah. nine hundred square feet. Yeah. So yeah. and what I are you so trying it, to create Chris, are you trying to create another house, or are you trying to no, create, no, 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 even an apart an apartment. An apartment. So, but is that? I think the whole limiting thing in the comments from the people in this committee, not our committee, in that in the uh, development group, are, you know, and then even the suggestions um, from the state are, if we're trying to limit it to one or two people, then getting up into fifteen hundred square feet is quite more than enough to put in three bedrooms. I mean, it just oh, yeah. seems like. Yeah, no, I wasn't you know, saying in a, in a community with septic, that seems like a very known, you know, a bad thing to do, you know, like yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. More bedrooms. Septic, so I, I just so limiting I limiting the size, limiting <coughs> the size of it might might um might contribute to the ability of more people to take advantage of it because of the septic system thing. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Well, that's why I think that we go back to the point of like who, like the limitations on residency on these kind of things, because that's going to define what kind of spaces are necessary. I mean, from that point forward, if you're saying that it's only going to be, you know, um, familial members of the, the, the owner, or if you even expand it out to something like an au pair or a nanny suite kind of limitations, you're, you know, you can say that a certain tight little footprint is going to be appropriate. Um, but I don't think that you know it's beneficial to define that without defining the other question first. And well, I was I was trying to think about it from like what Dave said that that you know if we have a home a good a good size home and it's a four bedroom home and you're going to give up some portion of it to for a um, for a um, ADU does that does one of the bed you know, are you going to take up the space of one of the bedrooms? So that it's still four bedrooms. It's just that it's three bedroom and a one bedroom as opposed to one four bedroom, you know. Because if you go to five bedrooms, 
that would uh, that would require an upgrading of the septic system. That was Bob Racy's main piece of feedback, which is um, these all have to be reviewed by by the health department health. because we're assuming that we will need septic upgrades. These are obviously adding bedrooms. So every one of them has to. And actually his suggestion was that um, we put it, we put the requirements for what needs to be submitted for the septic plans like right there in the bylaw and on the application. So at the time that someone is applying for this, they know right away that a, that a septic review and upgrade will be will be needed for the adding of, of bedrooms. Well, that, that's Maybe gonna create, that's going to create some issues too for for a lot of them because in because you know when you if you increase the number of bedrooms, anything that you do has to go full compliance. In other words, no, no variance, nothing no variance. unless unless we write something in that allows a variance, you know. But 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 from a code point of view, if you increase the number of bedrooms, the new SIP system has to be full compliance, which means there has to be enough room for the new system and the reserve area of the same size. So we're talking about a substantial amount of real estate will get used up um, and has to be available in order for that to happen. Yes, Jeremiah, please. Well, so that goes to the other question of the detached or non-detached. I mean, when you're making the, if, if you eliminate detached, you really put a premium on how those little footprints can work when it comes to the septic. If you've got a big enough property and you can have a septic system to support it detached, forcing it to be attached creates some potentially unnecessary complications in that regard. And if we yeah. wanted to make it workable, it, it seems an unnecessary kind of restriction. The other thing that, this, that stands out on that point to me is that from aesthetics, I mean, I think that if we look around town, there's enough ranch houses that have an attached and not enough other kind of houses that have interesting standalone kind of art, you know, architectural features. And there are some around town that do, that are value adding in my opinion. So to me, it's, it's one of those limitations that both is aesthetic aesthetically limitating and and creates complications when it comes to all that stuff that kind of planning. So. so you're saying that a detached unit would be better because the a detached unit could have its own septic system? I'm saying that it's, it's like why create limitations that could preclude well, well just so you'll understand the the code if, and if then have, I'm speaking from ignorance, I mean, forget. Yeah, if you have a if you have a garage and you put a, a an ADU above the garage and you say, well, I don't want to increase my other septic, so I'm going to put one in just for this one bedroom thing. The minimum design allowed by the code is three bedrooms, so you still end up with a fairly sizable system uh, for okay. that one bedroom. So 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 again, uh, when you when you and you know it has to have its own full size, you know code septic tank, 1500 gallons, three bedroom design. So you, you, you and again, it's, it'll be new construction. So it has to meet the code completely, including the reserve area. So you're not really avoiding much by doing that. And some of the newer systems may be expandable. So as long as the reserve areas are expandable. So there's a couple of ways that you could get around it, but, but um, just so you'll understand how that works. The problem with this, with this, with with the ADUs is going to be, is as Bob Racy pointed out, is going to be the septic systems, you know, you know, keeping keeping everything in code, um, you know. Whereas, and, and that's the that that's why this kind of a bylaw worked really well in Reading, where they got mostly sewer because it doesn't really matter. Whereas in Reading, now we have limitations that they never even thought of, and so one of the reasons for not going with detached is. The fact that, you know, I mean, you know, the only other way you could do it would be to tie the detached unit into the existing unit. And um, I don't know, eliminate a bedroom in the house. I don't know. If you have a four bedroom home and you eliminate one of the bedrooms, however, that could be done so that you could put within the garage or something. You know, I don't, I don't, again, that, that may be doable. I mean, if you have a couple who, who had a family and the family's gone and they want to do an ADU now, um, and there's only two of them live in the house. They got four bedrooms. They'll give up one easily. Oh yeah. So, so that, but how that got, how that, how that gets done and, and certified would be the question. Because if they sell the house, then they got, you know, if you can't make, you got to get rid of that bedroom. Yeah. 
you know, because yeah. the next people coming in may need the four bedroom for the people that own the main house and still want right. to have their rental unit there. So, so maybe you combine two of the bedrooms into one master or something. That's like a suite, that. yeah. Yeah. Because you can put it, you can put as many bathrooms as you want, and it's only bedrooms that's, that count. It's exactly true. You're exactly. It's only correct. bedrooms that count, because that <laughs> says exactly how many correct. people can live there. That's right. So, so um, yeah. So that you're exactly right. So, so I mean, I mean, I'm just these are just suggestions on ways to work around that that issue. Yeah. So, so just thinking out loud, some here. So, and and so, I, yeah, I kind of I kind kind of like Danielle's idea going across the assessors, making it a bigger unit is, is make it a, a minimum size for, you know, a small house, 900 square feet, but you could do some percentage um, with a bigger house, which may be on a bigger piece of property. You know, it's got all of those things could be going on for it. And, you know, it could be a little bit bigger unit. It doesn't mean it has to be more bedrooms just needs to be a, it's a well, keep it's, in mind you got to subtract this out of the existing square footage unless right you're gonna be adding on to the building. Well, if you put it in the basement then you got you know yeah on these big yeah. houses how big a house how big a basement do they have yeah. some of these people got two thousand square feet in their basement yeah well a lot so, of um these bylaws allow for you know three types one is the detached one is put it completely within the house and one is do an addition on your house and that's your in-law unit so i right. mean that is another option there can be an yeah. addition um yeah, if, if they you know, choose to yeah if that. they did it as an addition then perhaps you could uh if they did it as an addition then perhaps you could eliminate a bedroom in the house and and on that side and or 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 capture or block that bedroom capture it. Capture, capture it on the addition Right. And so that you don't see it. If you did that, I think you would you'd be able to get by the board of health thing. Right. So um, you know, and, and by the way, Chris, one of the things I've run into over the years is when you count bedrooms, the assessor does not count bedrooms that are in the basement. I know they don't. Basement bedrooms are not counted. That always slayed me as to why that was true. But every town I've ever been in where we where we go to do a septic system and we say, they say, how many we said it's got four bedrooms, and they said, "Well, how many are?" And you have this three upstairs and one in the basement. They said, "We don't count the one in the basement, so it's three bedrooms." But there's really four. Well, we don't count yeah. the one in the basement. So that's interesting because if you go to a big city like, I don't know, you go to a city like Revere and you put an apartment in the basement, all they care about is having two modes of egress from the bedroom. Yeah, because I did that in my house in Revere. I yeah. had to have I had had a, an egress window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and of course, I had to have all kind of special stuff because you don't want to have a, an egress window in Revere on the on the basement. Yeah. Yeah. Because they come in. <laughs> yeah. Right. You so I had to put a they lock. Can't, they can't come in. Yeah. <laughs> right. I had to put a lockable grate on it that they could open from inside. Inside. And right. I lived yeah. in that apartment <laughs> for yeah. over a year. So it was it was legal that way. Yeah. I yeah, wanted so, to be able to get out. Uh, yeah, so, so anyway, there's a few ideas on how to uh, <coughs> how we could do that and keep and keep them in keep it in the main house. So by expanding, yeah, like yeah. Uh, like Danielle, that was good you brought that up because expanding the existing and maybe using one of the bedrooms off the existing and give you an opportunity to to, um, to actually do that do that without having to deal with the uh, health issue. So. Yeah. So yeah, I, mean, um, I share I share Jeremiah's point about um kind of the aesthetics of a detached structure you know which you know a carriage house things like that that can look aesthetically nice my my issue is and we talked about it before is in addition which i again i i agree with danielle and i that's my reading of uh both the massachusetts one as well as some of the comments here is an addition is fine you know would be part of the attached if you will um to the main structure but it's it's getting where you're the accessory unit, uh, dwelling unit or accessory structure is um, following the requirements of a shed, you know, and being allowed to be five feet from somebody's property line. That's where, that's where I have a real problem with these detached structures because I just see them getting much too close to residents. And again, we have to always remember we're trying to provide housing in a means or a way to do that for people, but we're also trying to protect the person right next door that maybe doesn't want to build an ADU right. or doesn't want one next to them. So it's, you got to balance it. Um, you're not going to see 
out of 5,500 um, homes here, roughly, you're not going to see 5,500 people put ADUs in, you know, in years one through five. So there's going to be a number of people that don't want these. And so we have to protect those people as much as we have to provide a means for the seniors and whoever, you know, to add, add these kind of apartments on it's, it's, it's a balance. But I, I think I read, all, I read the meeting, you know, the, all the, it's it, to me from all the different department heads, it captured almost every single one of my comments and, you know, concerns, they all have the exact same one. So I felt somewhat vindicated reading all that. And then, the only one that I disagreed with was just Debbie's with the size. I just thought that was a little large, but that said, I agree with what you said, Warren, if it's a, or Chris, actually, sorry. Um, if it's a large enough property and large enough home, then it does make sense that, you know, maybe back to what Danielle said, the percentage thing would, would um, overrule that, you yeah, know, come into play. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'd be, I'd be open to that because I do get that if it's a really big property, really big, you know, home or whatever that you would want to just be limited to 900. But that's, that's kind of my two cents, but that was a, it seemed like a constructive meeting though. There was a lot of good feedback from everybody. Okay. Um, so, uh, but I mean, again, uh, that, that I, I think that probably uh, eliminating detached structures from our power by law probably is at this particular point in time, makes a certain amount of sense um, from a number of different avenues. Uh, yeah, you know, but you know, uh, I do agree that there. putting that septic right up the front, Danielle came out, I think said that, right up the front of this, right where they have to, or maybe it wasn't her, maybe it was uh, somebody else. Bob so they, Bracey. Bob yeah. Bracey's idea, put it right up front in there so that they, yeah. they see it and right away right and they yeah. say, Oh, I, there's no way I can do this because I'm already having trouble with the septic I have, and now I gotta yeah. I gotta do new. So there's no way I can do it. So they'll just yeah. drop that idea. Oh, and it's not like we're forcing them. We want to we want to get them the information so it's right in their face and and it can't be missed. And I I do agree with that. You you can't let these people miss that. And it, you know if it's if it's line one, it's just like ingredients on a on a box. The first mm. ingredient is the most. <laughs> the last but ingredient I, is the I least. The question, though, that keeps kind of coming up. I know it's like a dog chasing its tail, but it's a kind of a contradiction here because it seems like as Debbie just riddles off these two locations and they're very new homes uh, that have apparently, you know, built 1,500 square foot ADUs. Like there's, we don't have, they're not allowed. So yet they're yeah, building yeah. them and even references the permit so why are we even coming up with uh, a bylaw if jerry can't stop them and like what is our bylaw even going to stop them are people just going to so yeah that's cool but no, i think, I think the idea I, I understand what you're saying dave but, but i think that the bylaw is an attempt to encourage this to happen more often uh and give them some direction because there's a lot of people that may want to do it but have no clue what the what the rules are or, or, or how the, yeah, does it have any like will this stop the what is going on now you know that that's the part i just i'm like well, so well I, I, I think what it does is it gives us a, a, some parameters that we can so, some uh, rules and regulations some parameters that we can hold people for to the rules or if they violate them anybody, but the building that's that's for the has but if, but if they violate the rules and the regulations that we put forth, the building inspector has the ability to do something about it. Right now, he is not. Does he do though, Warren? I guess that, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but what we've seen is like, <laughs> you know, our lying eyes are telling us a different story. It, it, it's yeah, but not we have nothing. Happening. But he has no law. He has nothing to compare it to. He has no. He yeah, has no he doesn't have anything. If if we put nothing. in the bylaw, I, don't, I mean, I don't what he has that's... is that it's not allowed. That's all he has. Hey, yeah, I disagree. Warren, hang on a minute. I disagree. If Jerry was here, he'd tell you different. It's it, he has attorneys from these owners, and they tell you the sorry, there's nothing you can do. And that doesn't have anything to do with if we have a zoning bylaw or not. It's a state thing, it's a building code thing, and they just tell Jerry too bad. And Jerry, you know, tries a few of his things, but it's not like he's going to be able to shove this bylaw in front of people that again, the non-rule followers, they're gonna go continue to do whatever they want, it appa apparently, because that's what's been happening. Because right now, 
we don't allow ADUs either. No, no but I, don't have- there are two kinds of things that we have in town. One, we have a few legal ones that were already yeah. done legally. Two, yeah, we have ones that are actually illegal that we don't know about. And three, we have ones that act like ADUs, but are not true ADUs because they don't have all of the elements that make it a true separate unit. Like they share a common entrance or you can travel within the house from one to the other, or they have, I mean, they ha- just having two kitchens doesn't make it an ADU and it never so will. What's and the nothing one, we Daniel, do will. What are the two ones that De- uh, that Deb references though? She even says they're true. I don't know. So I have to ask yeah. Deb about that or maybe Jerry, because I don't, I mean, I don't yeah. know where any of them are. And they, and they may not be true know. ADUs. They may be almost there. They right. might well, because be. You can, because you can, like you were saying, Dave, you can get almost post there and, and not and not cross the line right, right. you right. can have two right. kitchens right. you can have this that and the other thing and, they and you'll still make always it. be able to do i agree that. but i can only go by what i can only go what deb says it says true in-law know. apartment with 1374 square feet on one stone cleave and again one stone cleave is a new road really and it's a fairly new, new yeah. old, you know new yeah work. they just put so, that addition on too yeah so i'm just saying like i get I get what you're saying, but I'm just asking a question that when Jerry was met in front of us, it doesn't seem like even with the bylaw, he can stop the people like at Stone Cleave at, at Chestnut from just doing whatever they want. Okay, but we don't know really truly what the situation is with Stone Cleave. It may be that they share a common entrance. And if that's the case, it's not an ADU and they wouldn't need a special permit. Um, but but Jerry, what Jerry is dealing with is having two separate kitchens and two separate everything. And, and in there are configurations like that that he truly can't stop because of the building code. It doesn't make them a true ADU. This bylaw is for true ADUs. And you're right, we're never going to find everyone who's um, not going along with the law. But I mean, that wouldn't, but now there's no legal way to do a true ADU. And we want to allow for an avenue for that, I think. And I think I'm, what we should I'm do all for it. I just I just wonder if you're gonna have some people that conform and then some that don't, you know. You you're always will. gonna have that, do. Dave. All we can do is yeah. put together the best bylaw that we can put together and hope that enough people adhere to it that we that we A get a reasonable construction of ADUs and B that we know where they are so that we can tell the fire department where they are and and, and we just get the best cooperation we can. And the ones that are partial ADUs, if they can, if they pick up the ball and say, "Okay, we'll finish it and and follow the rule now," I mean, it'll give them a, a roadmap that they don't have now. So let's just work on the best thing we can put together. Because you're right, some of it is, you know, some of it is <laughs> is is trying. I don't want to use some of the metaphors that come to mind, but uh, uh, yeah. it's just, you're doing the best you can to do to, to against a, a tide of things coming in here. So. So let's let's just do the best we can with this with this bylaw and see how many people we can get to conform to it. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's all we can do. Something is better than nothing. Yeah, we'll take as much input. We'll put as much into it as we feel we can without making it yeah. too restrictive, you know? You know, we right. do get calls about, you know, every so often, you know, I've got elderly parents or I have an elderly relative. I really like to, you know, build them a separate apartment in the house. Is there any way I can do that? And it, it would be nice to be able to give people a means to do it legally. Yeah. You, see, yeah, you need to have this, you need to have this, you need to have this. And yeah. most of all, you need to have a septic system that can handle it all. Right. You know, that's going to, it's probably all going to come down to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it will, it will either that, or they're going to have to make their home smaller. So it conforms. You know, or they're gonna have to expand their septic system. I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. put in a new yes. one, it might not be worth it. But should we preclude? Uh, yeah, the interesting that thing that that they had did you add? I'm sorry, sorry, uh, Jeremiah, go ahead. No, I was just saying that I would prefer that we, you know, draft something that is open ended rather than restri- unnecessarily restrictive for people who have the capability of doing it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're I agree. The Google yeah. attached, attached. I don't think that my property even qualifies, you know, mm-hmm. to be it's that hypothetical. But if I was sitting on a nice piece of land, if I would again, I always go back to that idea. If I'm if I'm moving to a community and I'm gonna put down millions of dollars on a property, and it's a big enough piece of property and a nice, you know, uh situation that if I've got the capability, 
I shouldn't be restricted as long as I follow those kind of rules of the septic and all those kind of things, the neighbors, right, right. the boundaries, all those things. So to just to, to preclude it from the offset. Mm, yeah. I don't think there were anything were intended to do that. Five, the five feet, though, for an accessory unit is the issue, though, for those detached, because that's what's going in. People are converting garages that are five feet from somebody's property into a dwelling, or they're putting in brand new five, ten feet from somebody's lot line. And again, so that's where, as I said before, that's where my issue with is with detached. If you could have the same kind of setback rules and get the structure away from another person's mm -hmm. property, who again might not be as enthusiastic as you, you know, for, for having something right next to them. Um, you know, that's who I'm trying to protect, that other person, not the one that's the idea. Right, right. You, right. Can. you could build that right into the bylaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could make them be a certain required setback from the property. But I do line. think we should walk before we run and we don't know what we're gonna unleash. And again, we we do have the reality in this town, and we could along 28 in the future expand to because you then have sep, uh, sewer it might change things but right now we are limited in this town versus others that we do have septic and we have to understand the reality of that so we shouldn't be trying to build 1500 square foot apartments on um you know on small lots or whatever you right know? right no i and i agree with you dave absolutely yeah so i mean again we, we should eliminate the so we should we should call this down to basically in-house en enhancements and maybe additions to an existing structure, but no detached. And then, um, and, and Jeremiah, I agree, we should, you know, you know, we might as well make it a little bit open-ended because they're gonna do it anyway. So let's make as much of it legal as we can and then get some control over it. Right, that's, that's uh, I think that's the way. So so does that mean we're ready to start moving forward on drafting something and, and uh, or what do we want to, uh, you want me to just write a, a draft and then we can schedule a workshop discussion at an upcoming yeah. meeting. Maybe not yeah. a meeting where we have a ton of hearings. Um, yeah. We can yeah. Yeah, we could do a five week, up. you know, remember we have always, we used to have the five week yeah. that yeah. fifth workshop. Tuesday, we would do a workshop in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got a lot of stuff done. We would designate that day. No, no hearings. No hearings. No signing of anything. Just talking about the workshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we'll put it, we'll get all this down. We'll, we'll take the basic draft that you do and we'll get as much, we'll make all the changes or additions we need to and try to get a second draft that, that you know, has most of our concerns in it. Yeah, and then we, yeah. then we could start bringing the second and the third draft to a public, yeah. public well, you know, more we'll, public we'll hearing. Board, we'll, we'll include the Board of Health's concerns right, right up front in it. So, yep. you, know, yep. just, you know, that way uh, we'll, we'll see how that resonates. Okay. So. Do you, I mean, our next opportunity for a fifth Tuesday, I think is, is this month. And I think it's two weeks from tonight. That might be a little soon. Um, yeah, that would be tough on you. So, I mean. January I must be the next one, right? I, I haven't. Let's see. Seen that. Yeah, definitely not December. That would be. That would uh, be see, four or five. Uh, Yeah, this January has a is a fifth week, but it's not a fifth Tuesday. So we'd have a meeting on the fourth and the eighteenth, and then we could do a you know maybe a workshop on the twenty fifth. But that would you know that would be that would be one week right. Wherever you do it, the workshop is going to be either right after a real meeting or just before a real meeting. True. We could also December seventh. Actually, no. We do have a here a new hearing on December seventh. Um, we could we could just schedule it for an, a, a meeting that's not too busy. We could do that. Um, you could. All right. Okay. All right. Well, then that's that would be our plan. In the meantime. We'll just all think about it, and if you think if you uh, get a chance and you come up with some things you're thinking about, write them down, send them off to Danielle so she can include them in your in her uh, in her first draft, and then we can either like them or take them out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, but don't be afraid to add stuff, though. You know, to, to 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 think of something and just throw it out there because you know everybody has a different take on it, and, and uh, the more we put in there, the more we'll consider. You know the 
the more input we have, the better of a law will come up with. So, so let's look at it as much as, as uh, much as we can. So, alrighty. Uh, I guess I think you've done it. I think you've done it again, Warren. <laughs> well, no, we didn't do plenty of administrative updates. Oh, yet. that's she right. One, and she could. Only have three things. Now. I, I promise it's that's, only three. That's things. what you always um, say. <laughs> no, no, so I, it's only three. Okay, <laughs> it's it's always answering the questions that takes the long time. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Yes. Exactly. It's the answering of the questions. Okay. The first thing is super brief. Um. One fifty three Marblehead Street is not for sale. Um. It's a neighbor's house that that is not for sale. And you mentioned it at the last meeting, so I just wanted to follow up. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, the. Willis Woods Forum, something went out on town news about this. I've been a uh, part of this group. It's mainly Linfield's project, but it affects all these surrounding communities. I think I mentioned it the last time. Um, it's what's interesting about this is it's really pretty much would be a new large conservation land area um, for, 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 for this area. And um, the connection to it could potentially be rail trail if it comes to pass. Even if it doesn't, um, another thing that's interesting about this area is it's, it's adjacent to um, the, the Old Smith properties. So could potentially open up a means of having some type of walking, hiking access to that, to that area um, that doesn't exist now. So anyway, there's a public forum on Thursday. Residents of all the towns involved are invited. Um, I think about 54 people have registered so far. I'll be... Um, there with Phil Hertz. So Phil is more involved, obviously, with the rail trail because the LUC is doing that project and, and we're not. So he's going to do all the talking involving the rail trail. Um, and I'll be there really just talking about, um, you know, the importance of having a, a, a nice large piece of conservation land uh, nearby to North Reading, accessible to North Reading and potentially even connected to it if, you know, certain, if certain things happen in the future. Um, so anyway, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, and finally, um, so Abacus, so David Eisen and I have been in touch since he last attended our, our meeting, He's putting the finishing touches on his presentation. One sticking point came up, which is, we don't know what to call it in terms of, um, it can't be called the town center because we have the town center. So he was asking me how should it be referred to? And I said, I would ask you, I initially felt and it should just be referred to as, you know, Main Street slash Winter Street. But he said, that's not quite what it is. And, you know, should it be the new downtown? Should it be, what should it be? And I, I just wasn't sure what to tell him. And so I wanted to bring that up. And then I the have- new downtown to sounds nice. Not yeah. town center because there is the historic town center and you don't want to light that fire under some people. No. Mm. <laughs> there are, there's already a fire lit under them for a house right now. So. Okay. So that was actually David's suggestion. Um, I don't know what everyone thinks about that. If there was anything else you wanted me to tell them. What was the, what was the last one? Uh, new downtown. Business district. Um, Community district. Like I'm business sorry, district. Business, business district. district. You know, or community district or um, new downtown. I mean, that, that just seems... Um, yeah. Needy. Yeah, you're right. Seems what? Needy. Needy? Yeah. Um, hmm. If you call it So Why, south of Winter Street. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you're from New York, are you? <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, Even things like crossroads, you know. Okay. Really yeah, that works. Emphasize, you know, the intersection of the town and the different parts of the community. Or, well, you could say downtown crossing, but there's one of those things. But that's in Boston, right? Yeah. There's a crossroads everywhere. So, you know, it's, what's it, the name? The, the his, you know how we had the, and I don't know why, Chris, I'm asking you in particular, I suppose I could ask Warren too, but you know what, our Main Street districts, they all have a name. What's the name of the one that Ooh. includes that? Oh, it's in our zoning overlay map. Yeah. Um, 
that not the that zoning. Would work. Not it's in the zoning, site plan review overlay. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, site plan review for for um, trying to make things look in four different styles down Main Street. Let me see if I can find it because whatever That's, that one's called, that would work. Probably would. Let me see. Um, that was a good idea. Thank you. If now I have to find it. Um, well, and that's what we use to, to help design uh, Heavenly Donuts. Yes, it's exactly. exactly what that, I, I brought that up, pointed it to the designer before they put pen to paper. Where is it? It's really hard to find in the zoning, so I'm trying to is it in find the, it in the is, is it in the... Uh, Yeah, it's an over, it's, it's three or four overlays that we had. Um, yeah, yeah, you 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 worked on those, Warren. I never did. Um, we had a yeah. you had a consultant come in, and there was one. Um, Not especially happy with the whole thing. But the names were good. The names <laughs> yes, were all quite good. Um, they were good names. I just look in the zone. I think it was Lowell. It was Lowell Crossing or something. Lowell. Uh, it was Lowell Crossing. You're right. It doesn't quite work for this, does it? No. Winter you crossing? Steal. It's a tough one. Yeah. That's why I said Main Street slash Winter Street, because it doesn't sound like we came up with anything catchy. It just describes the area. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like... Uh... It's a good point, though, because, I mean, it, it, that is the kind of name that really needs to invoke imagination of the people. And it needs to be brandable in that, in that kind of way. Yeah. Brandable, yeah. Yeah. And, and Mr. Yeah, Walner did not come up with anything. I feel like I've heard him say New Downtown. And maybe that's where David had heard it. I don't know. I don't quite remember the origin yeah. of that name, but. I, I still can't believe up in Salem the whole Tuscan village thing. It's like, really, guys? Salem, New Hampshire is Tuscan. Like, what? What, what are we talking about here? <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. Where, but when I say needy, it's like we don't. You don't want to be so. You're like trying to like associate with something that you're not. Like it needs to be genuine. It needs to be, yeah. you know, built into some kind of you know uh, foundation of reality. But. It's like shopping at the crossings or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Because there's gonna be there's gonna be shopping there. There's not a lot, but there's gonna be some shopping there, or eating, or or it meeting. It feels almost like coming up with a name for a development, which I think we're not doing that exactly yet. Yeah. We're just trying to describe the area, like the what is that. Well, it's what well, we yeah, want to make, it it's what we want to make. It's what we want to make it into that 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 that. In other words, a subdivision wants to be made into a bunch of housing and everything. So that's that. So so the name reflects that, you know. Um. So um, what, what we're trying to so trying to name it. Um, you have two choices: either name it what it would be, which is a you know, a, you know, um, a um. um a retail uh, or a, a residential and retail, to, you know, area, or you got to name it after some prominent fixture there. That that that, uh, like we had the, the drive-in theater. What was the name of the drive-in? And because um, that that had a that was there for many many years, the drive-in theater. Yeah. And what was it worth? Come on, right? There you go. What Star was it? Starlight. 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 And that still so, was used. Oh, but the car wash is gone, but it was used. Yeah. But, but if you take a look, yeah. now listen, take a look at those plans for the for that for the AR we did tonight. What's that whole property just to the west of it called? Starlight. Yeah. Yeah. It's still called that. Yeah, take a look at those plans. You'll see. The the mobile home, you mean? That on the plan that they that they gave us for for a, the A and R for sixty six Winter Street, yeah, take a look at it and look at the, what they call the associated property there. Right. Okay. Starlight. 
Lily Starlight, owner. Do you think if we use that in the presentation, people will understand it or recognize it? I think we would have to we'd have to start and 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 with that with that name and begin and develop that name. I don't think we can just suddenly throw it on. Yeah. But I noticed the uh, Heavenly Donuts property is owned still by Heffron, at least on that. Yeah. Property. Only that corner. He's he's given that corner to them, allows them to That's use it, right? right. Mm -hmm. No, I mean he means uh, sixty-eight Winter Street, right? Where no, Heavenly you, Donuts is. No, yeah. if you look, if you look at the the sixty-six where we just broke it up, there's a corner that he leases to them. Mm -hmm. No, but Heavenly Donuts itself is still owned by them, right? Because that, I mean, at least that's what the assessor maps show. Still owned by Hefferton? He owns the property? That's how it's listed. Maybe yeah. he does. All right. I'm not totally sure what to tell David how to refer to this in the presentation. Should we do something extremely generic like Main Street or something and, and let him know that we're thinking of using this name? Well, or, or give it to him and see if he comes up with something with it. Well, you can, you may you may have to key again. Yeah, I may have to date, name it after then. So the Main Street Winter concept, the Main Street Winter Street concepts, you know, it's something like that. Because it's a con okay. that's what it is a concept. So we call it the Main Street Winter Street concept, and this is what we're trying we're thinking about doing here. Okay. You can do that, but it. it he, Danielle could throw that name out, Starlight, to him and see if he comes up with something spiffy, Warren. Yeah, but I still and think that if you want to be descriptive, that's what it is. The Main Street when it's Main concept. Street concept, yeah. Because yeah. it's not that's what, what I'll tell him. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, a good, that's a good description of what it is without, you know, without leaning on somebody else's perception of where Town Center is or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Maybe one final thought, if, if I may. Yeah. Um, I would imagine any use of this would try to tie in the Martin Brook and the, the natural resources in those areas. Why not use Martin Brook as some kind of uh, uh, naming mechanism? Because we haven't really, because, because to this particular, we would have had to start out with that name on it because now you're adding a name to something that somebody has no idea what you're talking about. But if you go with the words Main Street, uh, Winter Street concept uh, plan, then they the report. Yeah, you've given it a name. And, and I understand why you don't want to call it town center or new town center. You, know, you don't want to be in the tread on somebody else's belief of what should happen. But you do want to describe the project. So I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah, that works. And if we go on with this, we could we could put that out there for uh... A then we can contest. start with Main Street, Winter Street concept, aka also known as Martin's Brook Project or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can this. tell David that that's how we're referring to it as the concept, but I think we have also thrown out a couple of sort of aspirational names for what we might start calling it later as it gets further along and more branded. And I think, like along the lines of Starlight, that using something that brings, that uses Martin's Brook might also be an option and maybe something for us to think about because. I mean, I think, Jeremiah, I think the kind of name that you suggest is also kind of along the same lines of, um, you know, not a name that we would necessarily use right now today, but maybe something that could be developed into it as we move this along. Is that yeah. what you're thinking? Okay. All right. I'm writing all these down. Um, I think for now, for the actual presentation, I'll, you know, tell them to refer to it in the concept way, but I'll, I'll tell them about the other names that we've been talking about. Um, and then in terms of our final destination for this presentation, so I think we were working with David to, to try to get this to a place where we would have a presentation that we could give to the select board in a joint meeting. And I think that that's still our goal. Um, but I wanted to kind of check in with you all about that. Um, is this something, do you want me to take the presentation and mail it to all the owners who haven't necessarily given us an enthusiastic response, but maybe this would get their attention? If we go to the uh, select board, how do we address the question of the private owners aren't really terribly interested? Do we try to have a more public meeting? I, I don't know. I just I kind of wanted to get your, your read on where we are with this and what our what our our goal is to wrap this up. Kind of like the idea of sending it out to all the owners. 
but then we but have then to we do have something to more, something public, more public, public, you know, either at a joint sure. selectmen's sure. meeting sure. or sure. something. Okay. I mean, I kind of like the idea of sending it to the owners because I feel as though, even though they didn't necessarily respond to my initial inquiries, they maybe owed some kind of follow up, even if they weren't interested. I don't I think know. So. Okay. I think so. We kind of used their property, <laughs> even if yeah. it was on paper. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm sorry, David. I think that's a good idea, Danielle. Okay. I mean, it can't hurt. You're just keeping them in the loop. I'll send it to them. And then at the same time, we can make it known. And I did mention this to the GA today that I, I think we still would like the chance to meet with the select board, give them their presentation, say, this is the project that we took on and this is how it evolved. And this is the presentation. This is what we found. Here are some recommendations and some next steps. I'd like to have David Eisen's you know, help with that. Um, I, we can't keep them forever. I mean, the contract is kind of long expired. So um, I'd love the chance to be able to include him and not wait too, too long. Um, so, I, I mean, is that still something you all want to do? Meet with the select board, you know, when, when, they, when they can have us? Yes. I think that would be something we should do, Daniel. I agree. Okay. <laughs> but we need to do it. We need to do it fairly quick before they get into budget season. And then they won't want to talk to us again. You know, we got like two weeks, two weeks uh, available in their season. I mean, I don't think we're going in two weeks necessarily. Well, I no, I, I don't mean that quick, but you know what yeah. I'm saying? It, they, they don't, you know, they're not very uh, receptive once they get into budget stuff. Yeah, I mean, our budget's going to be due in a few weeks, but the presentations don't really start in earnest for the departments until February, March. Okay. So I think we have some time. Yeah, um, January, January time frame is good. Okay. That sounds, that sounds like, that sounds, that's what I meant. I mean, I don't want to get yeah. into springtime because then we're in trouble. We're in trouble because, I mean, we have a consultant who is not going to be expected right. to be hanging gonna, on forever, Yeah, no, so. no, I understand that. You know. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. Okay. We, we need to let him go. <laughs> okay. Do you want to see the final presentation again? I mean, David has made the edits. I know there was some, there were some pieces of feedback um, given that he's made. Um, I, I, sh I feel as though I should send, send it to you and show it to you again before it gets mailed to anyone. Yeah, you can do That's it in the share okay. file. Okay. That's always a good thing. Okay. Always a good thing. I'll give you guys like a week or so to review it before I actually yeah. send it. Okay. Okay. And if we if we don't answer, too bad. <laughs> now, okay. Right. I like that chuckle, Warren. That was good. <laughs> that was all that I think. That's. Oh, I'm sure there's more fun on, but I told you I would only give you three things, so that's all I gave. Well, I told you it was that response stuff is going to take longer than your than your things, Danielle. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, we all we also do want to all stay tuned to uh, to what's going on with Shaylane. I, I mean, you know, we want to be a, a united front to make sure that gets squared away the way it should. And we may get a little pushback here and there um, from developer and so forth, but we need to uh, we need to forge ahead and get this to all happen. Um, no, we can't we can't let the developers push back on us because it's got to be done right. This well, is the yeah. only shot we got to fix it. Yeah, I know. So we have to uh, we have to be uh, united front on that. You have a question, Jeremiah? Yeah, I, I drove past there, and I you know exactly feel comfortable driving up into the subdivision to go take a look. Um, to what degree should I feel comfortable, you know, going and taking a look at those things? No, you can go take a look anytime you want. Yeah, you can drive in there. It's fine. I Absolutely. do it. Who's gonna Who's gonna say anything to you? Tell them who you are. That's all, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah. All they have to, you know, your, your best bet is if they call the police, you show the police who you are, and you're all set. You're there all right. are a few. There are Jeremiah, a few different homes under construction. You're, elect, so. you're an elected official. That's powerful, and it's you know. Between all the people who are, you know, contractors working on the different homes and the potential, you know, buyers and the people who are moving in, it's they they see people in and out. It's fine. Yeah. You can also go 
to Nutter Road, although I wouldn't go on anyone's property, but you can view some of the problem from Nutter Road too. Yeah, you, you could, could go knock there. on 20 and 22's door and say, hey, can I see your backyard? I'm sure they'll let you. You tell them who you are. Well, but the if developer you're go still holds covenants. The developer still has covenants and he still owns ease, has easements to all these properties. And so by the very nature of that, you have the right to go and look because we're the approval authority for that developer. So. Right. Okay. So, so Jeremiah, if you want to do that on the weekend or something, give me a call um, and I'll go over with you if you want, if I have time. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I've done it before. Warren, Warren took me the first time, so. Yeah, well, I've, been there, I've been there a lot myself lately, so. Yeah, well, no, I don't mean, I don't mean here. The first property that we went and walked on during development, you took me, Warren. You don't, I'm sure you don't remember that, but. Yeah. I would just say that I on number nine, the people are living there now. So, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily show up and go, I mean, you can look from the street, but I, I wouldn't necessarily, Dave Murray has an easement all along the drainage area, but I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go onto their Probably. yard without reaching yeah. out first, you know, they do live there now, so. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, well, if that's it, then we're all set. Yes, our next meeting is December 7th. Yep. Um, we'll have a day. A day that'll live in infamy. Yep. yep. Hmm. How many remembered that? I remembered that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, you did, Warren. I know you did. Yeah, military uh, stuff. You know. That's um, right. Summer <laughs> Yeah. All right. I will say we had a very nice uh, Veterans Day uh, service on last yes. Thursday. Uh, Rich gave a nice uh, speech as long as uh, along with uh, several others. But uh, it was nice to see the community out for for that event. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was a good use of the town center. First time I've been involved in one of those kind of uh, uh, town ceremonies. So it was really nice. Mm. It was really nice. Yeah, what, what did they have? They, had, they must have that in the morning, huh? Yeah, it was 11. Yeah, yeah. I was all tied up that day. Not much I could do. Yeah. I've, I've been flat out busy. No, it was, just, it was just good. Yeah, after the last couple of years, it was nice to see yeah. people out together. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Military, uh, you know, <laughs> remember those days. Yeah. yeah. Well, good, good. Okay, um, then all right. we're all set. We'll see you, uh, if not before, on the 7th. All right, take care. Yep, good, good night, night all. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Same to you. Thanksgiving. Thanks. Yep, yep, bye-bye. Good night. Good night.